Now that uh, is not the only component factors, uh, inclusions uh, to be included in an investigative report, even in terms of incident response. Uh, so, um, you know, a few additional uh, details uh, that we would like to see in an incident report in an investigative report, uh, even an initial investigation. Um, we, you know, I, I mentioned determining whether or not this is in fact a crime. If it is a crime, what's the status? How far along is it? You know, have they accomplished what they set out to do? Are they part way into it? Is um, there more that we could expect uh, them to be trying? Are there uh, things that we can do to, uh, number one, uh, prevent them from accomplishing their end goal, but also uh, are there things that we can expect to be happening that may give us more information if we want to uh, go into a full investigation? Is there, uh, you know, are there other aspects that they may be um, attempting that we can expect, we can plan for, that may give us information about uh, the identity, um, the uh, overall objective, the size of the objective, uh, you know, what, what can we expect here? And, uh, you know, is, is there more to come, uh, both good and bad? The, uh, well, in, kind of in, in relation to this, um, when did this start? You know, kind of how far along are they? Uh, how far back does it go? Where was the origin? Where uh, do we know? Can we know uh, when they started? Can we uh, pinpoint um, a specific earlier time that is particularly related to this incident, to this crime, uh, to the... Uh, investigation um, so uh, when did it start um, again you know what's the source do we have any uh, identification uh, of the party or parties responsible um, these days we're getting quite used to the fact that uh, when uh, at least a, a large uh, attack that makes the news, um, it's a group. And uh, we can identify um, the, the group, you know, by our code names for them, whatever they call themselves. Uh, and so identify that, yes, this group has uh, performed other uh, attacks on other people, uh, which... Uh, you know, again, sort of firstly gives us um, an indication of who they are, but secondly, uh, because of previous attacks, gives us an indication of where they may be going. Uh, what are they going to try to do against us? Um, so whether or not we can do anything about them. I mean, an awful lot of these groups are, in fact, groups... Um, resident in, if not in fact associated with foreign nation states. And so, you know, even when we identify them, uh, there's nothing we can do legally. But, uh, again, by identifying who they are, uh, we can look back at the history of what they have done and see, you know, what they may be attempting to do on an ongoing basis with regard to an attack that way may be uh, a target or a partial target of. So, um, you know, uh, looking at the 
uh, the operation of the attack. Uh, when did it start? How far along? Who are they? Uh, what's their objectives? What might we expect on an ongoing basis in the near future uh, with regard to this particular incident? So, um, looking at uh, our own levels of security. Um, do we need more security? You know, very often the answer is fairly obviously yes. But um, do we, uh, you know, are there things that we can do that are fairly simple? Um, did we grant too much access on uh, an open system? Uh, too much access via um, web, a web page, uh, which is publicly facing, uh, but has itself uh, got too much access to our other systems. Uh, do we need to put an air gap in there? Do we need to improve our firewall? Do we need to just, you know, do a little bit more tuning of our access control list? Uh, so, you know, what do we need to do in terms of our own security and improving our own security to prevent uh, this specifically and then uh, by extension this type of thing in the future? Is this, um, is, is this type of, uh, Attack has it has it got broader ramifications? Uh, do we need to change our our access policies? Do we need to uh, look at this as a a type category, which means that we have to actually install additional security tools or um, a more intensive uh, and possibly more compute resource intensive tools uh, that can uh, look in more detail, do more analysis in terms of what we need to do uh, to prevent this type of attack from getting at us. And, and we need to, uh, you know, identify those things. Uh, the uh, company elements uh, you know, our, our resources, our functions, our type of business, um, you know, is, is this an additional risk in terms of our overall business? Um, that is just, you know, part and parcel of it. And then, again, that needs to be addressed in terms of, okay, do we live with this risk? Or do we get out of that business because it is, in fact, too risky, too dangerous? to the enterprise overall. Uh, what, you know, what was it from our company that they used to get access, to attack us? Was it our systems? Was it our security tools themselves? That's happened before. Um, was it our people? So, you know, what type of uh, components of our company were being used against us? Um, so, I, again, um, you know, is there a need for law enforcement involvement in this? If it is a crime, and what type of crime, and, and so on and so forth, and all the, you know, associated uh, considerations with regard to that. Do we want to turn this over to the police? Will the police, you know, the local law enforcement, are they able to help us? in addressing this matter? Or do they simply not have the resources to deal with it? And the last thing, the chain of evidence, the chain of custody. Um, I'm, this will come back. Yeah, we need to protect the evidence. We need to be able to prove at every point that yes, this is evidence, it is reliable, we took precautions to ensure that we ourselves could not change the evidence. The evidence is, in fact, reliable. 
and that is vitally important. And we will come back to that.